Welcome back, Shalligators. Today we are gonna talk about Ariana Grande going more public with her SpongeBob boyfriend who looks like an orange paint swatch, just every shade of orange. Why are his teeth and his skin the same color? Why are his hair and his um, outfits the same color? I just, there's a lot. Going more public with that guy, Ethan Slater. Cool name, like hot guy in an 80s movie name. I'm Ethan Slater. And you know what, Brittany? <laughs> I skateboard. Like that's the name of that guy. But this is the name of that guy. So here we are. We're gonna talk about what's going on because Ariana posted this like weird caption. It's like literally just one long subtweet and it's very vague and victim, it's victimy, it's victim narrative-y saying she feels very misunderstood this last year, very misunderstood. Girl, girl, come on. Because obviously, I mean, not obviously, you might have a life and you don't care about celebrities. Honestly, that's so amazing for you, truly, don't change it. If you know anything about what's going on with Ariana, you know she's kind of a homewrecker. And he's a homewrecker too. So both of these people, SpongeBob and Ariana, who is now like the eyebrowless wonder, I just have to look at this picture. What in the golem is going on here? They both look like goblins, but like different breeds of goblins. And she is a beautiful girl. He is, she is a beautiful girl. And I just don't, there's like something wrong here. Is it the eyebrows? We'll get into it. But they were both married when they met on the set of the Wicked movie, and now they are both divorced and they are with one another. Is this an example of, hey, love conquering all and people taking control of their happiness and realizing that they're not happy and it turns out they meet their soulmate and it's kind of messy. Is that what this is a case of? And we've talked about them before, but today I wanna do a really deep dive into the psychology of a homewrecker. What makes a mistress? I'm gonna tell you about it. I'm gonna tell you what makes someone cheat and how that informs a mistress personality. Because you know what, girl? You might not be in that position right now, or maybe you have been in the past. I have, I've been another woman, not to someone who was married, but like, you know, in college and someone had a girlfriend, whatever, whatever. And it is a very toxic mind space to inhabit for very long. But sometimes life really is just kind of messy. We're gonna get into it, but before we do, just wanna remind you guys that we are talking all things glow up and New Year's resolutions and some pep talks over on my Instagram. Head over there, ShallonXO. I'm giving you some little snippets every day about how to glow up in terms of your body, your confidence, your boundaries, how to be more evil, how to be more glamorous. And if you want some deep dives on those things, you're like, no, I need a little bit more of this. Join the Shalantrage. We are expanding on all of those things on our little fan group here on the internet. You get five bonus videos a week. We're doing things like how to be more of a sociopath and dial up evil to make it work for you. How to completely change the kind of guys that you're dating and totally branch out and sort of glow up your dating standards and your dating habits, plus a whole bunch of other stuff. 18 different group chats to keep each other accountable, share our New Year's resolutions, share love and laughter and stories and advice and all this stuff. But yeah, first things first, head over to my Instagram, ShallonXO. All right, Ari. So she posted on Instagram, on stories, and she seemed to address how she felt about all the rumors going around about her. Now listen, we talk about celebrities here, obviously, and we talk about rumors. We talk about rumor and conjecture, and sometimes we know what's going on and sometimes we don't. Ah, I think we do know what's going on with this situation. So there's, there's only a few ways this dynamic with Ariana could possibly have played out. Because she insists, or like her people or sources, whatever, insists that, oh, oh no, her and Ethan didn't start dating until after they got divorced. Let me tell you something. If you have been, even just dating someone, forget being married, legally married, forget piling on top of that, being a public figure and the scrutiny that comes with that kind of breakup. Let's just say you're an ordinary person and you're dating someone and you meet someone and you're like, I really like them. There's somebody at my door, sorry. And you really like them. Is it realistic? Not, come on, is it realistic? to say that you would 100% break up with your boyfriend when you hadn't even kind of explored what things would be like with this new person. Maybe that's you've hooked up, you've kissed, you've had a conversation about it, you've gone out on a few secret dates and kind of tested the waters. 
I'm going to call shenanigans and say that very few people fully let go of one branch before they get a grip on the next. Is this a perfect system? No, this is a shitty thing to do. It's a shitty thing to do. But life is messy and this happens more than we think. And it is very easy to sit in judgment of that kind of behavior until you've been in it. And th But this is the thing. This is why we don't want to be the mistress because that shittiness gets inside of you. It gets inside of you. Now, I'm not a person who feels guilt. I've talked about this before. It's simply not in my wheelhouse of emotions. It never is. But I am a person who feels pride. I have a tremendous amount of pride in myself. I have a tremendous self-concept. Being someone's fucking side chick or their dirty secret, no, 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 no. No, I don't give a fuck about the girlfriend or the wife. I don't care. I care about me, okay? And that's how you should feel. Well, it's not fair to her. I don't care about her. She is the object between me and what I want. So I don't, I don't care. I care about going against myself. I care about being able to look myself in the eye and be like, what happened to you? This is who you are? You're another man's dirty secret, really? You're Shal and Lester, you're Olivia, you're Hannah, you're Aaron, you're Haley. You are not anyone's secret, no. Nope. But some women are. But let's get back to Ariana real quick. So I don't believe that nothing, nothing happened with these two. They both got divorced publicly he's got a baby he was married for five years to his like weird theater nerd wife like cute whatever theater people are like that they get together and just nerd out do you think they just sing they're like i need the parmesan pass it over here is that what they do like at the dinner table are they just like ah, just breaking out into song all the time i picture that i don't want anything to do with those people anyway he got divorced, she gets divorced, and I'm sorry, you can't tell me that these two never even kissed without deciding to make like, before they decided to make this huge choice. Like, humans are risk machines. Our brain is a risk machine, and I would never, I'm sorry, I don't cheat on people, but if I was gonna, I would be like, I need to know 100% that that person I like is gonna date me, if not marry me, for me to leave this marriage. I need to know it's a real sure footing. I'm stepping out onto a ledge. I need to know there's something there. I wouldn't be like, well, I kind of want to go on a date with them. We're getting divorced. And if that is the case, if that is what either of them did, then they were both so incredibly unhappily married because clearly these marriages were circling the drain and they just needed the spark of someone else to be like, okay, my crush from afar, okay, on SpongeBob, Mr. Orange Tea, eh, he's like a Fenty, foundation swatch. I feel bad for Ariana's husband. You're like, this? This is who you left me for? This is who you left me for? Where are your eyebrows? Where's your head? What is going on right now? Who did I marry? I feel bad for her husband. Anyway, this crush from afar is such a spark and such a contrast to what I have been feeling that it's not even about this person. It's not even about this person. This person was merely a signpost. They weren't a destination but he was a destination and so was she because now they're together. So that tells me, that tells me there were some shenanigans behind the scenes. I think I 100% think they hooked up. Filming a show, being on set, it's a stressful experience. People bond over stress. Men especially bond over the hormone vasopressin. It's a stress hormone. Like think about the military. It's my brother, band of brothers, football, fraternities. These are all stressful experiences. Right, And so if you can go through a stressful experience of filming a movie together, even travel is a stressful experience. Not necessarily a negative stress, but it's, it's a stressor. You bond with someone more. So again, kind of got to think that these two had something going on. So what's with this pathology with her? Because you guys have brought up that like, this is not really the first time she's done something like this. She stole Pete Davidson from Cassie Davis um, who I think he, wasn't he engaged to her? And then they were like hot and heavy and that kind of put Pete on the map. And before that, she stole Big Sean from Naya Rivera. Now, again, we're gonna go back to the truth that you can't steal a happy person. You can't steal a happy man. I've tried, it doesn't work. If you're in the Schlantrage, you remember the, the, uh, the Jesse saga. I had a big crush on this trainer at my gym and I was like, I'm gonna break him and his girlfriend up. No, I can't because he was really happy. I was like, oh, well, all right, whatever, bye. Like I gave it like 
two flirtations. I was like, not working by <laughs> like, but that's the thing. I'm not sticking around to like play this role and be the third party. Why would I? The world is full of men. I'm shouting fucking Lester. Okay. And you are so-and-so fucking so-and-so. You're not doing that either. But someone like Ariana is. Why? The mistress psychology is a very interesting one. And I've watched it play out, honestly, with some of my friends. One of my good friends only dates married men. Only. And I'm not talking she's like a sugar baby, she gets her rent paid for, she gets the Maserati. No, she just has a boyfriend who's married with kids. And the men are like, I'm not leaving my wife. I'm leaving my wife. They don't make any bones about it. They're like, no. It's a weird mindset. And she is gorgeous, Ivy League educated. She's a doctor. Like, she's not like, oh, like Trailer Park Crystal, who's got nothing better to do. And we're like, what? Alice, like, what are you, what is this? Big boobs, blonde, amazing. We're like, what the fuck is this? What is this? So I've spent a lot of time thinking about the mistress psychology because I need to try to understand this person who's like a sister to me. And I'm like, but there is this side of you that is like, what? She has very, very low self-esteem. Hold on, let me, let me wind that back. Let me wind that back. She has high self-esteem. She has low self-worth. She has low self-worth. We've talked about this in the Chalantourage. We have talked about this on my podcast. It is the concept of being a Gucci bag at a garage sale. Gucci bag is very valuable until it's not and you put it on sale for four fucking dollars at your neighborhood garage sale. I had someone say that to me, a girl who had like met me twice. She's like, you have very high self-esteem, but you have very low self-worth. And I was like, whew. I mean, just like the soul left my body because she was right. And I was telling her about my ex, Tom, drunk, alcoholic, drugs, in and out, like just fuck boy situationship over and over and over, this dumb cycle. And she's like, what are you doing? What low self-worth you have? She was dead ass right. And we think that having high self-esteem inherently leads to high self-worth. I mean, aren't they one and the same? No, no. If you ask my friend Alice, describe yourself. She'd be like, I'm smart, I'm capable, I'm strong, I'm funny, I'm well-rounded. She knows, and I, I would agree with all that. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. But yet, she can identify herself as that Gucci bag, and here she is at a fucking garage sale, you know? I was gonna say there's two types of, of mistresses. There's a kind with really high self-worth and there's a kind with really low. No, I don't think that's true. I think it's just the low. Let me break this down. So when I look at Alice's psychology, and I think a lot of mistresses are like this, it's a built-in fail into the relationship. There is a built-in dead end. And so that when that man eventually leaves you or when things fall apart, it's not really your fault. He's not actually rejecting you. He's choosing his family. He's not simply saying, you and I don't work. I'm just gonna reject you in favor of the great wide open of Tinder. I don't know. There is something larger than you that you can't really blame him for choosing. And in fact, you can spin it that he's a good guy for choosing his family. And so that makes the blow of him rejecting you less. And so if something is doomed to fail, it's never really a rejection of you. Because if it was, your self-esteem couldn't handle it. I don't know how somebody does that for years. I've been in that situation, you know, where I like someone with a girlfriend and it was like literally day two of talking. I was like, you gotta leave your girlfriend or I'm not speaking to you ever again. And sometimes they did. And sometimes they didn't. But I was removing myself from that role instantly. And I remember at the time thinking about poor Alice and I'm like, I, I don't know how she's done this for years. I don't know. I don't know. But now you might be thinking, well, 
Ariana clearly got what she wanted. Okay, let's look at why. Let's look at who. She didn't get an oil tycoon to leave his wife. She didn't get a carpenter to leave his wife. She got another actor to leave his wife. Why is this significant? Actors are insane. They're insane people. They are so selfish and self-absorbed and neurotic and narcissistic and fragile and just they're absolutely out of their mind insane especially theater people who have a chip on their shoulder about being theater kids because they probably weren't the popular kids at high school. Maybe, but not like the jocks, not like the hot people. Like, come on. Even if you're the most popular theater kid, you still are a theater kid. You know, you walk into any like Wall Street bar and they're like, oh, a theater kid. I was captain of the rowing team at Dartmouth, but nice to meet you, Ethan. What a waste of a great name. And that means they are always trying to puff themselves up. They want the clout, they want the fame, they want all of this glamour, this A-list life. And especially in theater, theater's a fucking grind. I can't, I don't know how theater people, why they would even want to like perform. It's like, we had a two year run of Pippin. It's like, so you did what, 1500 shows or something insane? Why on earth would you wanna do that over and over and over again? That's, I, I put a bullet in my head. I couldn't do it. I don't know how they like to do that. Oh, it's different every night. Is it? I don't know, because you're saying the exact same words in the exact same order, and it kind of seems like the exact same thing. Okay. But listen, that's the thing. They don't get their props. They don't have the fame and the glory and the clout and the money like an actual actress, like an actual celebrity that people care about. Ariana does. So she introduces him into this world he's always wanted that he could only dream about. It's very beguiling. It's very beguiling. They want the old razzle dazzle. So Ariana is presenting this glittering fantasy of a life he's always wanted versus his wife, who knows all his jokes, knows everything, has a squalling baby at home, and now it's like the baby, the baby, the baby. And I'm not saying women with kids deserve to get cheated on at all, at, obviously. Do you know the number one time a man cheats is when a woman's pregnant? Because from his point of view, it's not about him anymore. He's like a second class citizen in the house. He's like a disappointing handyman. Like, oh, you couldn't put the crib together. That's interesting, that's interesting. She's all about the baby. His family's all about the baby. Everyone's always asking me, the baby, the baby. And he's like, got it. He needs to go someplace where he's getting his ego stroked and other things and attention. And someone's like, wow, I've never heard that story. You're so funny. You look like an orange sherbet dreamsicle thing, but you're so funny. So in that sense, it was an easy choice for him probably. And same with Ariana. She also needs excitement, excitement, excitement. So let's go back to her psychology, the psychology of someone who chronically goes after guys who are taken. I believe this also signals extremely low self-worth because for those women, it's not enough to get a guy. They have to take someone else's. In the Chalantrage, we were talking about something kind of like this the other day, and I quoted, I referenced this quote from Oscar Wilde that I love, I love it. He once said, it's not enough that I succeed. Others must fail. Yes, yes, I love it. I wanna succeed. But another aspect of success is watching the people I hate fail. Don't believe me? Aren't you always happy when your ex gets fat? There you go, there you go. Now you understand this feeling. And in those little micro doses, fine, okay? Some people take that to an extreme. And it's not enough that they get a man. Someone else has to lose hers. And they need to be the reason for it. It's this deficit, right? We maybe need 10 romantic points, and then we got a man, it's like, okay, all 10 points are fulfilled, yay. They have a hundred that need to be filled. So they gotta, they have this deficit, they have to take someone else. It's gotta be messy, they gotta make drama. They have to make that man choose them again and again and again through this drama and this fight and this baby daddy argument and this court battle, blah, 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 blah. It's a constant, I choose you, I pick you, I choose you. And they're gonna set up these constructs over and over and over again to get that, ha, ah, ha, ah, to get that juice. Now this is a very, this sounds very toxic. And when we think of this on paper, we're like, why would anyone want to engage with someone who's doing shit like that? 
Do you know why people cheat? They cheat for two reasons. To explore different sides of their personality. Ethan, you can say the side of his personality that he wanted to explore. The glamour, the clout, the fame, okay? That was always in there. It was always what he wanted. Never had an outlet for it. Never had an avenue for that. And number two, they cheat to feel alive. They cheat to feel alive. So you have this mistress manufacturing these things, these dramas. And you have this stable wife who on paper is doing everything right. I give you a home. I give you love. I know you. I'm raising your child. And he's like, but she's drama. And when you're dealing with a weak man, any drama is better than none. What you want is positive drama in your life. We're trying hand gliding together. We're sailing to Antarctica. We're both learning Japanese. That's positive drama. That's a positive stressor, right? Because remember, people bond through stress. That, those are positive stressors. Those are expanders. When someone is really down bad, when they are so unhappy in a relationship, when they are so unhappy with themselves and they feel stagnant, any flame is a good flame. Doesn't matter. Does not matter how combustible it is they are just gonna gravitate towards it. So listen, if you're trying to get a man to leave his girlfriend, you have to be the bigger dog in the yard. You have to be the bigger storm. You do. You have to create more stress and more, more of a headache. Basically, okay, hold on. I take that back. It depends on who he's leaving. If he is with a chaos monster, you gotta be like strong and stable and there for him, but also the victim. I can't believe you're doing this to me and you won't choose me. You have to play that card. If she is like boring as fuck, you're Lauren Sanchez to his Jeff Bezos. You're like sexy and dynamic and you've got tits and you've got lips and you fly helicopters and I don't even know if she has this accent, but I feel like she could because she's got that kind of aesthetic, right? You are like Angelina. Look at Brad and Jennifer Aniston and Angelina. Perfect example, perfect example. Angelina was like the girl next door. Everyone wanted to date her. Why? Because she's chill. Because you could show up in Birkenstocks on a date and just want to smoke weed. And she's like, <laughs> ah, Jennifer Aniston. Is that not how she acts? Drives me nuts. Like kind of pretty, but I mean, Angelina Jolie? Are you kidding me? She's not even a human. She's like something that fell from, from space. Hatched out of a beautiful rhinestone pod. She's gorgeous. She was very exciting. Brad was bored with Jennifer Aniston. Bored. Angelina was like everything. She was overwhelming. She was stimulating. And she wanted to have his baby. So she fulfilled that need that Jennifer Aniston was fundamentally not going to do. There was no shot in hell. There was no chance he was ever going to stay with Jen. None. Angelina had it all. She had the excitement, but with the stability of wanting to have his baby. Jennifer Aniston was done. Done. So these are some interesting, interesting things to keep in mind. So we, again, let's recap. To look at the psychology of a side chick, you have someone who maybe isn't getting off on stealing someone else's man, but she is gravitating towards that dynamic because it's a built-in fail. Why would you want a built-in fail? Because when it eventually happens, it's not your fault. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting the situation. They're not even rejecting you. They're simply choosing something else. And hey, you can't have both. You can't have both. It's a fork in the road. You gotta take one path or the next. Or they are the toxic kind. They are the women who want to steal someone else's man. We've talked about this with Khloe Kardashian. We've talked about this with Miranda Lambert, that they love taken men. The shit bites them in the ass. You lose them how you get them, right? But they need that like, oh, that juice of always getting chosen. Look at Khloe and Tristan. I don't think she's manufacturing all of his affairs, but I do think her getting back together with him relates very much to going after someone who was taken because he had a baby mom. He, what do we call him? Third trimester Thompson? Yeah. He had a pregnant long-term girlfriend when Chloe met him. And so after he keeps having these affairs, he comes back to her. And so she gets to be chosen again. You see what I mean? She's repeating this cycle of choose me, choose me, pick me, love me, choose me. 
fucking pick me chicks, man. Or they are the kind of person who is giving a man all of this fire because he is desperate for stimulation. These relationships are ultimately doomed to fail if they're built on that fieriness because every fire burns out, every storm runs out of rain. You know, that does not make a sustainable relationship. And girl, oh my God, if you've ever, we're literally, we're also talking about this in the schlantrage. And I, one of you guys is like beside yourself and I get it. If your man leaves you for the Angelina and then you watch that collapse and this Angelina leaves your Brad Pitt for someone else, And what are you guys in the Schlantrage? You're like, I this man was like the love of my life. And he leaves me for someone who just threw him away. It was easier to bear when I thought, okay, maybe they're soulmates. I don't know. But no, it was like a game to her. It didn't mean anything to her. And she ruined our relationship. He ruined our relationship for like a passing fancy. Really? Uh, it is brutal, brutal, brutal. But you know, if you, if you are in the mistress position right now, I'm not justifying where you're at, but I will say life is messy. And when you get older, there's almost always some kind of baggage. Weirdly, when I look around at my friends who are happily married, a lot of them were dating other people when they met their current spouse. Some of them were even married. And they, but this is the thing, they got divorced. They broke up and they were unhappily married or they were separated and the divorce proceedings went ahead and now they had like a reason to like speed things up, you know? They didn't stay in that mistress situation, not for long. Because the mistress put her foot down, his foot down, was like, I'm not fucking doing this. Pee or get off the pot, dude. Like, do you want to be with me or not? If not, stay where you're at. I'm moving on. I'm absolutely fine. It's tough. It's tough no matter which, uh, which position you're in, really. Okay. What do you guys think about this? Oh, we didn't even read Ariana's caption. Damn. Okay. Sorry. Sorry about this. We just got into... One of the most transformative, most challenging, and yet happiest and most special years of my life, she wrote on December 29th. There were so many beautiful and yet polarized feelings. I've never felt more at the mercy of and in acceptance of what life was screaming to teach me. I've never felt more pride or joy or love while simultaneously feeling so deeply misunderstood by people who don't know me, who piece whispers together and make what they want out of me and their assumptions of my life. Okay. I am reacting to things that deserve my energy only and removing and protecting myself from things that do not. I feel more human than ever. I feel more deeply than ever. I feel softer and stronger all at once. If you ever feel misunderstood or alone, just remember that it will pass and you are not misunderstood and alone. Take a deep breath and know that you are so incredibly loved. Aw, that's cute. That's cute, that's cute. I mean, yes, she says she feels very misunderstood. I get it and I don't. You know what I mean? Like, as we have talked this whole video, life is messy. You don't meet people under the ideal circumstances. You try to mitigate the damage. You try to do the right thing once you realize, fuck, this train has left the station with the other person. I have real feelings. I gotta get out of this marriage. I mean, good for her, good for her. I do think it's interesting that she seems to be chronically attracted to people who've been in relationships. And you know what? Maybe her husband, Dalton, maybe he was in one too. Maybe she made that ex-wife, ex-girlfriend sign an ironclad agreement, paid her off to go away and shut the fuck up and never tell her side of the story. Maybe. I don't know. Wouldn't surprise me. The best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. And I think we've seen, we've seen from Ariana, this is kind of her wheelhouse. Is it just that life is kind of messy and that humans don't let go one branch till they get a grip on the next? Or is it that Ariana is a homewrecker? 
Tell me in the comments what you think. And like I said, go to my Instagram if you guys want some advice, pep talks for the new year, how to glow up, how to be a little bit more evil. Cause you know I put an evil spin on motherfucking everything. I'm not gonna be here, live, laugh, love, choose kindness. Don't choose kindness, it's literally for losers. I'm gonna tell you how to choose evil and get everything you want. I'll see you later, shalligators. Whoops.